Hello and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host Brian. We're going to do something a little different to wrap up this week. We're going to check out some drum corps. One, because it's been like two years, I think, since the last DCI video I've done. And two, because I, I promised a July reaction and uh, we're in the middle of July, so I need to make good on that before I forget about it. <laughs> uh, so yeah, here we go. We're going to check out something requested from Steinblitz1506. I'm back to recommend the massively underappreciated Carolina Crown 2019 More DCI Shenanigans. It features a lot of Pasadobo, think bullfighting, bullfighting Spanish Latin music, along with, along with the best ballad and closer segments of all time. Still loving your content, man. And because this is a very visual performance, as all DCI is, and there will probably be many wide shots of the entire field to see the shapes and stuff that the marchers are, are making, I've decided to do something a little different today where I allow the video to take up a much larger space. There is a chance you're probably watching this on Odyssey as YouTube banned it, uh, blocked it, whatever, because DCI is really strict about their stuff. I'm lucky to have found the performance at all, but whatever. I think it's important to see what's going on because it is a visual type of performance. So let's dive into this and see what Carolina Crown put on in 2019. Drum majors Michael St. Ors, Andrew Morrison, and Doug Bell. Is your core ready? Performing their 2019 program beneath the Very surface. interesting the outfits. Proud to Looks Carolina like clear Crown. plastic. I heard singing alongside that too. It's very tough keeping myself in such a small part. I want to move so much. Yeah, building lots of intensity here. We have the slow movement on the fields, matching the rising intensity of this section. Give me some pit camera. I love the interplay between the Xyla, the Glockenspiels and the brass. Oh, they got a little stand here? Oh, they got mellophones too, not just trumpets. Those bright, full-bodied slurs on that brass line, so good. They have marching tubas instead of sousaphones. I wonder how common that is.
Okay, that's a solid starter. Nothing too wild or impressive, but showcasing a little bit of the stage gimmick that they have, allowing people to go up there and take a little bit of precedence. The detail of the pattern is movement. The detail of the pattern is movement. Some odd chromatic stuff going on, but also on the right side there is some really cool interlocking line movement going on. Yeah, this is some RPG boss battle music right here. <laughs> so I've been learning a little bit more about how digital sounds work in DCI. And they have to be triggered by hand. And I was looking at the pit seeing who might have uh, a sample pad or, you know, just an electronic drum pad in order to play samples from. I didn't see one though. Yeah, very cool getting that similar rhythmic idea from the pit as the... Yeah, dude. Oh, dude, that is sick. Also, dude, timing that reverse cymbal sound. Because you would have had to hit that in between beats in order to get it to perfectly line up with the movements of the, the drummers. Oh, dude, the delayed movement. Yeah, dude, that was cool. Because we had like a stereo effect where like the horns were replicating what the other players were playing in order to get this like reverb duplicating effect. And also having the movements lining up with that duplication sound. And so that was clean. Yeah, dude, this stuff's no joke. You see these people breathing heavy. This is very physical. I've probably said it before, but it's been years since I've done DCI reactions, so... I'm just going to repeat it anyways. Um, marching band covered my, my PE uh, grade or requirement in high school. I mean, this stuff is, this is no joke. Especially what they're doing. There is a ton of movement on the field. Oh, they have microphones up there, though, too. I gotta go double check that. Maybe those weren't sampled voice lines. So... That looked like a microphone hanging off the bell. Did they have to set that up in between transitions? And they're going to have to pull the mic off the bell when they're done, too. Yeah, beautiful flow.
Yeah. Dude, the flag sync is wild. It's making sure all those movements are in time with each other. I mean, you're talking about coordinating 30, 40 people. Yeah, maybe, maybe like 20-ish. Still, though, those flags, it's really easy to see the visual discrepancy when they get out of sync. Okay, so there was a flugel player in front of a microphone, a, a stationary one. Then there's also a flugel player with, an, with a wireless microphone. And that's the one that's put on the, yeah, like that, it's put on the bell. So that's interesting. Also, how common is microphone use? Oh, I actually the guy with the with the fuzzy mallets. He's got the uh, the drum pad, so they are doing samples at times. Dude, I miss playing. Marimba though, the raw dexterity of four mallet playing at speed, there's it's such a high. When you nail it, it's like it feels so good. Might be a bit blasphemous, but sometimes better than hitting some high notes on trumpet. snake movement. It might look like some of these movements are a bit exaggerated, but it's necessary when you realize that your judges, they're, they're up in the stands. You gotta be as exaggerated as possible, they can see everything. Oh, dude, that was cool. I don't know what happens. Fun little way to split that line up, though. Those fast pit lines are awesome. It's interesting seeing the timpani in the pit too though. It's the drums just on the left, well, just missed it. They're sort of copper, bronzy color, and they're all the way on the right of the pit though. I would love for a pit cam on this whole thing because some of these lines, I'm just picturing what they look like. It just is bonkers. Oh, dang. I'm digging these symmetrical shapes rotating. Yeah. Oh. Marching tubas. Mm -hmm. 
Interesting. Ladies and gentlemen, under the direction of Jim Coates, Carolina Crown. That well, I gotta, I gotta keep seeing this. That's wild. Cause see, here's the thing. I've never done DCI, right? So maybe that's that's different. Cause that's like top of the top of the top. This is the cream of the crop professional drum corps players or marching bands in general. Um, even is there like a DCI level for like full bands? Because drum corps, it's, it's brass and, and drums. Uh, there's no woodwind in here. And uh, I always thought that was a missed opportunity. Like brass sound great. But you notice all of the quieter sections, sometimes the brass will show up, but a majority of them are done by the pit with, uh, you know, the glockenspiels and, and the marimbas and, and all of that, the xylophones. And sure, that sounds really great, but also imagine some of those lines coming out of flutes, clarinets, bringing that really warm, hollow, woody sound to, uh, to all of the, the music. I just think that's awesome. I think DCI is really missing out on some key timbres here for great music. But, you know, when I think of professional marching bands, I think of DCI. I don't think of any, I don't even know if there is something else. I'm kind of wondering if anyone has uh, notes about that. I suppose I can go look it up myself too. And I might, cause I'm, I'm curious about that. But, you know, this sounds like it's the highlights. What do you look forward to in marching bands? The big brass moments where the trumpets hit those really high notes and the really cool dexterous drumline stuff that was popular, popularized by the movie Drumline. Uh, and, and you don't really think about the woodwinds, but to me, they're very key elements of contrast in, in music in general that uh, I just realized it's, it's just not here <laughs> in DCI. Um, so anyways, though, that completely aside, where, how did I even get there? What was I talking about? You know, I honestly don't know. I started off, I said, I'm not in DC. Oh, nope. Anyways, let's just shift gears entirely. Some really cool things they have going on here, right? First of all, is all of the electronic elements. I'm still kind of iffy about this, right? So we had that one group a few years back. Um, Y'all had me watch, and they did a really cool thing where they played like a slowed and reverbed version of a chord that the band was holding out, and they all sort of like leaned sideways, and then the, the sound shifted, it pitch shifted back where it needed to be as they leaned back up. And I had questions about that because there's no way they could have done that naturally. That had to have been electronic. And this is where the whole discussion happened about use, utilizing samples in DCI. And I just, I don't know where I stand with it yet because that example was really freaking cool. Like it was such an awesome visual to be paired with that audio. And it would just not have been possible really without the sample and there are some cool samples that happen in here but on the other hand it also kind of feels a bit weird to me it would be like using an electric guitar in a marching band or in, in dci it just feels a little bit it's, 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 it, it feels odd because it's new it's utilizing electronic elements in something that I have always felt has been an acoustic, traditional idea. And so, am I just being too conservative about this? Should I expand my mind and allow some of the, the more modern ideas in here? Should DCI and marching in general be pushed into the present? Not even the future, just the present. And in any other context, I'd be like, yeah, 100%. But here, I'm like, I don't know, man. It feels kind of kind of shaky ground there. And I think that's because at the end of the day, it does feel kind of gimmicky. It allows them to do something that they can't normally do with the instruments they have at play. 
it also doesn't feel like drum core, which is drum and, and brass. We've got an electronic thing in here. We have a dedicated, well, not dedicated, but we have a pit member who plays a drum machine. I don't know. A little bit of that feels outside the scope of the project. I don't know. Where does everybody else, uh, you know, where's your opinion lie on this? And especially, I want to see you know, you state your opinion and also like how much marching or DCI um, exposure you have. Because I feel like people outside of it will be, will more likely have the tendency to say, sure, throw it all in there. Because <laughs> um, outsider groups tend to have more progressive ideas for, for whatever. But I'm kind of curious where people sit on that. Because it also leans into my next topic, which is the excessive, almost, use of microphones. I don't think I've ever seen a marching show utilize wireless mics on an instrument before. For instance, we had that solo trumpet player with the drum line in that third song with the mic on. It wasn't really a, a, a loud section. I think the trumpet player absolutely could have played with the volume necessary. If not, throw another one in there. Make it a duet instead of a solo. If you really need the extra volume and width. But to me, utilizing the microphone there kind of goes against the spirit of the whole thing in a, in a much more strict way than use of samples. I, I, I very strongly feel about the microphone thing. <laughs> And I, I don't know why. This is certainly something I need to interrogate myself about because I I don't really think about DCI too much. These are new thoughts that I've had while watching this performance. And so a lot of this isn't just off-the-cuff um, ideas about the performance itself, but it's also my own biases about the form of DCI and the performance of it in general. But... Yeah, there were a couple of times where I liked the idea, but the execution utilizing microphones, samples, electronics of all sorts felt a little off to me. On the positive side, though, I really like the stage behind the pit, and I even thought it was quite ingenious to put the pit on the field. Again, I don't know how common this is. I've been outside of the DCI world for quite a while now probably would have been my early 20s mid 20s I was still paying attention to this stuff or um, we're talking the 2000s early 2010s at the latest so maybe it's more common to put the pit on the field nowadays but at least it allows them to be in most of the wide shots and I think that's awesome I got a good look if I couldn't see the details of what they were doing but I could still see them in most of the shots but I think more interestingly is it requires the movement to work around the pit's placement we actually saw some really cool ideas here where instead of having the full rectangle to work with we kind of had a portion of it cut off and we had instead an L shape to work with. And so a lot of the movements kind of hyper focused on, well, for us, it would be the right side of the stage. What was, I mean, the right side of the field, what was behind the pit and the stage was rarely utilized, usually for long ideas um, and shapes more so than individual concepts which tended to feel a bit disconnected from the rest of the group so it does have pros and cons but i think they ended up working with it rather well and utilizing it as a, a positive in most instances rather than a negative the stage itself is also really neat i like the idea of that uh, i've played a couple of solo and duet sections in um, marching band situations and Usually, you have to get out of the line where you're at and rush all the way to the front of the field and play your solo so that you're separated from the group visually. And then you got to run back into place. <laughs> there is one time, I kid you not, my band director said gazelle leaps. That's how fast we had to get across like, uh, I don't know, dude, it was massive. We were probably about halfway deep into the field and we had to cross 10 or 15 yards uh, horizontally and make that direction vertically and we had to get there play play a duet rather fast so we had to 
still have some breath when we got there. And then we had to sprint across the front, around the pit, and come back, swoop in behind the band to get back into the trumpet line, and then continue to play. Yeah. It was not fun. I would have loved to have a stage really close to where everything was to separate me out from the group, where I could quickly get back in line where I'm supposed to be for the next set. Um, so I, I think that's really cool and a genius, and it's one of the few props that I think that's a bit more practical that I've seen that works really well. Um... There was something else I wanted to bring. Oh, instrumentation. Dude, there's a lot of flugelhorns in here. Flugelhorns have a specific sound to them. They tend to be a bit brighter than trumpets. And I love that sound, especially in the first uh, flugel solo that we had. It was quieter, but it was very uh, light and lots of slurs in it. It's a very uh, fast moving dexterous idea. Not short and staccato, not very abrupt and direct and powerful. Very light though and flowy. And eventually another guitar came in under it and harmonized with it. Beautiful little duet there. But uh, yeah, the flugelhorn is just a perfect sound for that to execute that brightness and width of body despite it being a quieter section, not having as much volume to it, but the skill also to put that airflow through it to give it that full body and that brightness. Uh, just a ton of skill there, but a beautiful uh, and, and intelligent selection of instrumentation for it. I'm also surprised about the marching tubas. Those are those big uh, cannons <laughs> that the tuba players are holding on their shoulder. Um, let me see if I can find a nice shot of those. Um, but yeah, in my experience... Um, well, I've only really played with one group, but we use sousaphones, which achieve all of the, um, dang, I've almost got a good picture of it. I just got to find it. Um, they achieve all of the winding and roundingness of the tubas by wrapping it around the body. And so it distributes the weight in a little bit better of a way than the marching tubas, which just puts it all on your shoulder. Yeah, I can't find a good picture of it. They are not showcased well enough, often enough, to really get that on. But yeah, I don't know if sousaphones and marching tubas actually have distinct timbres to them. To me, they sound like tubas. <laughs> they all sound the same. It's just a really low brass. Um, but I think it's wild to see so many of them just kind of carrying it on. And there's a lot of them, too. And I think that just comes with the DCI territory. It's another example of me being marching band oriented rather than DCI oriented. I'm used to two, three, four sousaphones top. And these guys had like 15 marching tubas, which is, you know, it's probably pretty typical for DCI being that they are brass only. Um, and the fact that they just want to be loud and they do get loud on this. I think the last thing I want to bring up I'm not going to touch on the, uh, the flags much and the dancing and the rifle throwing because that's just not my world. I, I commented a little bit about the syncopation of the, um, the flag throwers. Really, really well done. But aside from that, like uh, that's just not my area of expertise. I can't commentate on it. It looked good. <laughs> that's the best I could say. Um, but the, what I really want to focus on is the flow of this this performance because here's the thing right for the most part these songs are not written for the performance they select a bunch of songs that might sound good together and then they create um the movements to go along with the music i assume that there might be some groups out there that compose their own music but again it's not going to be the performers it's going to be a composer for the group uh, so I find it really difficult to speak about the composition itself since in some cases they're using music from, you know, that's already been made 10, you know, 50, 100 years, 1,000 years. Um, so usually I like to talk about music from in relationship to the people who made them. But I do like the flow of the songs, how they move from one idea to the next, and the ebb and flow of it all. We start off with something very 
big, bombastic. Uh, it brings in a lot of energy, but also a lot of anticipation, Move utilizing that back and forth between the really loud brass chords and then the, uh, the pit doing their fast ideas and the drums replicating that rhythmically. And going back between these uh, quieter complex sections and then these big simple walls of sound and the contrast between both of those creating all this anticipation of where they're going with it and then using this to have highs and lows throughout the entire show constantly moving between these uh, faster more impressive pit ideas um, or even you know the brass especially the mellophones ended up playing some of the faster uh, ideas as well in the quieter sections, uh, but then the big bombastic moments, and also utilizing this on a gradual scale, where our highs at the beginning certainly met our highs at the end. Well, let me reverse that. Our highs at the beginning, nope, at the beginning, I mean, that's right, meet our highs at the end, but then we drop it down. And we have this high, and then this high, and then this high, and that way, it each... Each peak is a bit higher than our last peak, and each of our valleys is a bit higher than our last valley. And so we, while we do have a rising and falling element of intensity and escalation, we do have this general growth across the entire movement of all four songs, which I thought was interesting too. Again, I don't know how common that is. I've only ever played three song sets, but 13 minutes also feels about right. So maybe some of these songs were shorter, or maybe they were too sections that I felt were two separate songs that were combined. Regardless, I thought the entire flow was really well done and the 13 minutes went by really, really fast for me anyways. Um, so yeah, I think that's going to wrap this up for me. I don't think there's anything else I want to bring up here. Those are my thoughts. Carolina Crown 2019 DCI show. Let me know what you thought of this, if there's anything that stood out to you, anything you'd like to add on to what I said or correct me on. Uh, maybe you want to give me your own thoughts, opinions, perspectives, completely devoid of mine. Just, you know, toss all that. You got something to say? Put it down in the comments. I'll read it. We'll have a discussion. It'll be cool. All right. Uh, above that, in the description box, you can find a link to Linktree. It takes you here. You can find links to my music, ways to support the channel, a link to the Discord server, and so much more. Above that, if you could, like, subscribe, and ring the bell. I greatly appreciate all three of those. That wraps it up for today. I'll be back tomorrow morning at uh, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, 3 p.m. UTC. We're going to do a live stream. It goes for about two hours. Uh, I'm hoping we're going to be able to get through all of it uh because my my mouth I, I don't know if you saw probably not anyways i had a wisdom tooth pulled a couple days ago and my mouth's still a little raw <laughs> this video was only 30 ish minutes and i'm already like oh dang maybe this is a bit much <laughs> so uh we'll see how that goes we're going to start it if nothing else i just don't know if we'll get through all 10 songs a full two hours uh and then otherwise though monday we'll be back with next week's Theme, which is random rumble my patrons just i asked them for any songs no themes no requirements just let me know what you want me to check out i figure that'll be a good way to wrap up the final week of the first half of the year uh, after that i will be taking a little two-week hiatus as i always do in the summer all right until next time remember to be critical not cynical of the music you listen to and have a fantastic morning afternoon or evening whenever you choose to watch my videos Thank you.